All right, and welcome back to Crew Call with the Scooters. We are so honored to have our next guest here with us today. Um, it is uh, international muralist Kyle Holbrook. Kyle, thank you so, so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me on, Courtney. I'm excited to speak We're with you. We're very, very excited to have you here today. So you are, um, I know you have locations in Pittsburgh and Miami, you're an international muralist, but you're born here in Pittsburgh. So do you wanna give a little background on uh, your, your growing up, your, your childhood per se? Yeah, so born in, uh, you know, born in, in Pittsburgh in the Wilkinsburg area. Um, mom and, and dad were both teachers. So uh, I went to Pittsburgh Public Schools. Uh, I went to East Hills and Frick, um, Frick International Studies. And, um, and then I went to Central Catholic for a little bit and Central Catholic, but, uh, or, or um, well, Central Catholic and uh, Penn Hills. Okay. But it was different times in high school. Right. But, um, and I always went to Carnegie Mellon. Uh, the um the college courses on Saturdays okay and I used to go to the, the Carnegie Museum every Saturday since like um third grade so that's where I learned so much about art I mean we used to go around the, um, the museum and sketch all the sketch the dinosaurs sketch a lot of the exhibits um the amazing resources we have in, in Pittsburgh um and yeah you know no matter where I travel I'm always you know, kind of like an ambassador for Pittsburgh because I'm in these different countries and, and I'm always talking about our city. That's um, incredible. You know, the first so many different things and so many different things were, invi were invented in Pittsburgh. So um, I'm constantly talking, bragging about our city. That's incredible. So a couple of things. Well, first of all, your parents were both teachers. What did they teach? My mom taught math. My dad was an English teacher. Wow. Um, and and I like writing, so so the the, the English wasn't um, too hard for me. I do some writing as well, but math is um, the opposite side of an artist's brain, you know, because yeah. two plus two must be four, and I and I'm like it could be five sometimes, it might even be eight every now and then. So um, I, 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 I struggle with uh, with that concept of, of math, and my mom was like a math specialist, so. Um, yeah, doing homework was, was always uh, one of my worst times. Oh my God, that's my, my childhood math. memories. Math homework. Math homework. No, I understand. I was not, I was not a fan of math either. So I'm right there with you. Um, so I love that you, okay, so you're going to Carnegie Museum of Art, which is an incredible museum. We're huge fans. So, you know, you're sketching dinosaurs exhibit. Was there a certain artist or type of art that you were inspired by as a kid that you were drawn to more than others? Uh, no, I mean, I, I really think it was an advantage for me being exposed to all these different um, genres, you know, seeing the Impressionists, mm -hmm. seeing, um, you know, so, uh, you know, Rembrandt, Van Gogh, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, the Impressionist period, and, and um, just being exposed to those different styles, uh, I think, at such a young age benefited uh, my art. That's, that's incredible. So after high school, did you stay around Pittsburgh? How did you start becoming uh, and getting into mural art? Well, after high school, I went to the Art Institute of Pittsburgh. Okay. Um, I had my daughter right out of uh, high school, um, okay. Kyla. Awesome. Kyla, is that her name? Now she's a, uh, yes. I love that. Now she's a senior at Columbia University, pre-med, and she actually is good at math. She's the but, mathematician. But I had her, <laughs> but I had her um, right out of high school. So, it, and when I, and, uh, I found out the first um, semester starting in the, uh, the Art Institute. In the Art Institute, I learned so much uh, different things there. You know, EECM, the parent mm -hmm. company for Art Institutes, started in Pittsburgh as well. Yeah. Um, and, and it went all, all around the art on the country. But um, I think, you know, being a father so young mm -hmm. just made me look at my art and take it much more seriously. So I started, you know, started a business. Uh, 19, 
uh, started doing, you know, T-shirts. Um, then soon after getting into the art suit, there's this career services department. Wow. Um, art caricatures, and um, and 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 one time, a, a mural came across the their board and for the. You know, and you know that was like a um and so i did that first mural it was in bloom um in the guy's house um his name is uh the wolf and um and and he was on house arrest nice guy he had these big yellow glasses okay and he talked like something out of good clothes and he said and he had a um he had a sauna in his basement and he said, mm -hmm. so when me and my guys are in the sauna, we want to come out and feel like we're in the beach. So he wanted a beach scene. I love and that. And it was, it was the, uh, the worst mural I ever did. He loved it, though. Um, I wonder what it looks like now. But, I mean, I, you know, it was big for me at the time, which was, you know, it was really, really small now, you know, but it was 10 feet by 10 feet or something like that. And, um, you know, I had protractors, crayons. I'm trying to figure it out. Um, airbrush, paint, you know, everything. But... Uh, <laughs> And so that was my first mural, and then I ended up doing his his cousin Pete and all these different mm -hmm. family members of his. And um, then I started doing and, and starting to use it to and realizing I can use it to to beautify communities. And and, and um, so that's what really changed. And when you talk about, because we want to go into that a little bit. First of all, where was that first mural? Do you remember? It's in Bloomfield. All right. Yeah. And, I'm gonna go uh, find it. Well, it's in the, in in the guy's house. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I don't want to say his name. I was gonna, his <laughs> nickname is the Wolf. His wolf nickname is the Wolf. He's a nice guy, though. That's great. Well, that's so you talk a lot about community. So, how quickly did you realize that you could touch community through art? And how did you figure out a way to? Did that inspire what you were doing? Did you go into it as taking what was happening in the community and then creating art around it, or vice versa? Um, you know, like I said, my, my mom and my parents were both in the education. And mm -hmm. so um, when I did an internship at the Boys and Girls Club in Wilkinsburg, I was working with a group of students and, and um, I was realizing I could, I could engage them through art and especially um, public art. So mm -hmm. I got invited to do a mural on Penn Avenue. Okay. Um, and when I was doing that mural, kids from the community were coming up um, as well as kids that were in the, the class I was interning in. And, you know, I remember a time specifically, it was a Friday, it was in the evening, in the summer, so, you know, 9 or 10 p.m. And I had all these teenagers just quietly out there painting with mm -hmm. me. Um, and, you know, they weren't getting in trouble, they weren't doing, you know, anything else, but just, um, give me all their attention painting and, and, uh, and, and at certain times of painting, then they would ask different questions and these were questions of life. You know, a lot of them didn't have a, you know, a father figure or different issues. Um, and so I was able to use art to not only beautify the community, but also do something more impactful. Um, and, and that really uh, changed my life as far as what I wanted to focus my uh, my talents to, to be able to do. Absolutely. And then did you start, in terms of the, the international draw, did you go out and promote the sense of community, what you were seeing here, to go across the world and, and create the same type of programs, per se? Well, it happened organically. You know, mm -hmm. I started... Um, you know, my business so, so young, um, when the internet was just starting, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was still the late nineties. Um, so it just happened organically, a lot of word of mouth, um, and, and, and things began to grow. And, um, you know, one time I was doing a mural in Arborly with a group of students there and Arborly is, um, it, it, it's kind of like a, a juvenile detention center, but they mm -hmm. do a lot of programs, um, educational programs and life skill programs. And um, so we're doing a mural there and, and a lady, a Dr. Um, 
Susan O'Rourke was in the audience mm. and she's from Carlo University, a great friend now, but at that time she approached me. She saw how I worked with the kids. She saw the project and, and asked if I wanted to join her and a group of professors and students uh, in the uh, upcoming trip in Uganda. Oh, wow. And that was 2000 and, um, 2012. And that led to a lot of other things. And, and prior to that, in 2009, when there was the earthquake in, uh, in Haiti, mm -hmm. um, we got a grant from the United Nations in 2010. I'm, I'm just thinking of my timeline. Yeah. <laughs> in 2010, I believe. Um, and that was from United Nations. The OCHA uh, was the program. And that was a million dollar grant to go into um into haiti and do murals all around haiti especially the artivany region okay. where it's the more rural region and um and work with um families artists kids but also have an, an economic incentive where we are able to pay seven thousand haitians mm. uh what is the equivalent of a hundred dollars a piece um but it was it it's 800 good, which is their currency, which is enough to be able to, to do a lot of things with. Um, and so I had that, that bug, if you will, right. of going internationally. So when I was approached a couple years later um, by Susan, um, it really, I, I, one of those things, again, changed my life to, to thinking more internationally. And what did you see in those communities, you know, bringing art to like, a, you know, an area that has had such devastation, like the earthquake. What did you see that art do besides creating jobs, which is how do you see it uplift that community? Well, it was really eye opening. Um, you know, every time I travel and go to a different culture, I, you know, I learn something and see some, you know, the world from a different lens, which, which I think can enhance, you know, your, as your art is, in, and I think it's important for all artists, but uh, that initial first trip to to Haiti, just seeing the the amount of poverty, um, you know, and this is rural, so it's already the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, but um, this is the poorest part of it because it's the rural areas. Mm -hmm. So people didn't have TVs, um, very few TVs, very few, you know, um, electricity, um, running water, anything like that. And so messages were spread as, as they always have been since the caveman days, mm -hmm. where, where it's been art on, on public walls. Mm -hmm. um, and so the messages at the time, and the reason for the grant was to spread messages about um, proper ways to, to dispose of, uh, of waste and, um, and, and, and hygiene, um, oh. um, as far as washing your hands and, and uh, how to put food we had a lot of different lessons that we were using the art um to teach and so you know just seeing the the, the importance um of you know of public art in uh, mm -hmm. you know that these people didn't seldom spoke any english but they understood the art and the, mm -hmm. the messages because it's the art, art is universal language. So right. um, that was eye opening. That's incredible. Wow, that's that's an incredible story. And you think about it that way, you don't really need, it kind of, art kind of ties us all together no matter which lang language we speak. So that's, I'm sure seeing that firsthand right. is unbelievable. So even though, you know, you're a great international artist, we like to claim you here as a Pittsburgher. <laughs> Cause that's, you know, like you said, I'm everywhere you go. So let's talk a little bit about, no about it. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about what you've been doing here, which is incredible in terms of um, the Liberation Wall mural in Pittsburgh, the MLK Community Mural Project. Can you tell us a little bit about that and, and the inspiration and thought behind that? Yeah, well, the, um, the Liberation Wall has been an ongoing project. It's been um, four years in the making. And it's a partnership with the Community Empowerment Association and, and their CEO, Rashad Birdsong. Rashad Birdsong is a, a mentor, um, an activist. He was a, a Black Panther, um, but he's done so much and been a leader in 
um, the African American community and especially um, in, in Homewood. So um, he has so much different knowledge that it isn't in, a lot of it isn't in history books um, and isn't um, taught. You know, a lot of the, um, so able to learn messages from him and then put those on a public mural, um, which is the largest mural in Pittsburgh, that then students um, and um, families and whoever, the community, um, the, you know, the Pittsburgh as a whole, could, can learn from these images um, and who the people were and the messages they were teaching. And so um, this year um, being such a unique year with what happened with um, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, just everything, you know, 2020. And then being, um, you know, during a pandemic mm -hmm. really made kind of the perfect, um, you know, those negative aspects made kind of the perfect stew, if you will, right. um, to, to, to bring more light to the need um, to address a lot of these social issues, especially around racism, police brutality, and um, you know, systemic racism, police brutality, and, and gun violence. Yes. Um, and these have been ongoing things, but these tragedies kind of brought more light to it this year. And so, we wanted to do a project and it came up with a project called Pittsburgh Solidarity for Change because we know what the issues are, talking about the issues can be beneficial um, if it's talking about solutions mm -hmm. um, because, you know, the, the issues being the issues isn't going to change unless we start doing action steps and talking about the solutions. And so we did Pittsburgh Solidarity for Change, which was 10 murals um, all around Pittsburgh. It was done this, this fall and had the opportunity to have Pittsburghers be able to, to write messages and join in the actual painting, wow. which, made, um, which made all the difference because you know, people have um, ideas and thoughts and you know, these things have affected everyone. These issues have affected everyone in our, in our country and around the world. But a lot of times people feel as though um, their thoughts are, aren't being heard. So I wanted to provide an opportunity for everybody's voice to be heard and to do it together, no matter what your political affiliation is. It's such yes. a polarizing time. Um, and just take it to it's a humanity issue. And, you know, I'm really proud of the project. We had you know, thousands of Pittsburghers help write messages and participate um, at the same time as we, we did these huge, beautiful murals, 10 of them all around the city. Really? Um, what an incredible, and where do, like, where can we see them? Are they in a certain area? Is there certain streets that they're on? Well, there's three in the strip district. We want to make sure that the message was um, highly visible. Right. And the, the most tourist place of Pittsburgh, in, in my opinion, is, um, is the strip district. Mm -hmm. So we have three right on Penn Avenue in the strip district, one at Penn and 31st, one at Penn and 29th and one again on Penn Avenue in 22nd. Um, and the one on 22nd is area um, where there's a lot of foot traffic because it's right across from Colangelo's and all kind of in the popcorn yep. factory. Um, so it gets a lot of eyeballs on it. And um, then we had the Hill District, um, a huge one we partnered with uh, Reverend Grayson, the center that cares in the Hill District. The mayor and the chief of police came uh, to work on that um, and write messages because it's not anti-police, it's anti-police brutality, which is two different things. Right. There's a lot of good officers who do a lot of good work and um, it's just talking about anti-police brutality. There's, uh, you know, the, and, and, um, and the negative aspects and, 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 you know, talking about solutions about that. Then we hit Homewood, mm -hmm. Sharpsburg, um, Uptown, Uptown, we had the we did the John Lewis mural, um, who recently died um, in two, 2020. So we wanted to do something to memorialize his life as a civil rights leader for 50 years and all that and all that he did um, as an example of a solution. Kind of looking at his life as a model. Um, and, but then we also had um, the Stillers. We had Trey Edmonds come and and, uh, and help paint on that mural. Um, so. You know, when you have um, 
high profile people that can draw more attention to it and just and just let everybody see that you know grandparents kids worked on it all kind of you know even you know the mayor and, and stiller players so I mean, we're all pittsburghers together so that's the whole point of it that's incredible and having it in these different communities also i'm sure you probably saw just them you know in like a therapeutic way, being able to share their own voice and, and, and contribute to that in terms of art. You know, I think you mentioned it before, it's like focus on the art rather than some of the other stuff to get the solution done. Um, yes, certainly, yeah. especially when you talk about gun violence and, and, you know, a lot of times that's seen as an issue that might be just for, um, you know, for, for one community or just mm -hmm. that's something that just happens in the hood or happens in the black community, but, um, you know, having those messages uh, shared in, in larger communities, you know, that everybody sees, I think was also important to shed light on, on, on that issue as well. That's incredible. Well, and I will link, you know, is there like a place that, do you have like a website or something that we could link to share where some of that stuff is or? Yes, well, there's mlkmural.com. Yep, I was gonna get into that next, yes. Um, oh, sorry, I jumped the gun. On. Yeah, I sorry. like it. It was a perfect transition right there. So why don't you tell us about that one as well? Well, MLK Mural is, uh, MLK stands for Moving Lives of Kids. Um, and that's my arts organization. I started in 2002. But that has a lot of different information on past projects and, and future projects. It also has um, a volunteer um, form for people that want to volunteer um, in f future projects. So it's just really uh, information. Um, so people can get involved. We also have curriculums. You know, one of the things is right now, Courtney, murals are so popular. Mm -hmm. and, and just doing this Pittsburgh Solidarity for Change, every single community wants to start their own mural project. Right, right. You know, when right. I was doing murals 20 years ago in Pittsburgh, p people didn't really know what murals were. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I was the only project. Then, then, then Sprout Fund started, and they did a they did a few murals for a few years. But they kind of came and went. Um, but now, you know, Homewood starting their own one. The Strip has their own one. Um, the Hill starting their own one. So it's, it's exciting. And so one of the things on the website, there's a curriculum that, um, you know, and it's one of the reasons my organization we were selected in 2009 out of all mural organizations in the world because we really developed this curriculum, um, you know, to get that um, United Nations grant. So it's a real specialty um, that, that we have developed. So we have this curriculum that anybody can use to be able to learn from and, and do their own project. So it's really exciting time. I think there's gonna be a lot more murals coming up um, in Pittsburgh. Uh, and, you know, even though I'm in my organization is not doing them, um, I think this is gonna be good for the, for the city as a whole. I, yeah, I think it's incredible. I think, you know, what you're doing, you've, you've kind of created your own community as well to, to let it grow. And what are you excited about in terms of, you know, the next generation of muralists or where it could go from this and the change that art can really make um, in the future? Yeah, I think um, some really good questions. I, I think uh, <laughs> technology and art are really really uh, daily re-inspired through technology trauma, you know, on the iPad, you know, making drawing cool. That was always, you know, um, you know, fun for me all my life, just, just right. drawing pictures, but, uh, you know, haven't done it in, in some years. And so it's kind of making um, drawing cool. David Hockney from, um, you know, real famous artist, he's doing um, iPad drawings. Mm. you know and selling them for a hundred thousand so it's you know so it's being considered um real art as well but it's technology so it's it's kind of a renaissance right now an exciting time um as far as that is concerned and then in the up and coming artists i mean there's there's there, there's so many and and um you know I, I think there's some really talented ones that i worked with in pittsburgh this this year um uh, max gonzalez uh um, Almond Ray, um, uh, Dana, who goes, you know, Dana Morris, who goes by Sosa. Um, so these artists have their own little swag with it and, mm -hmm. and uh, it's social media savvy. Um, so, so it's cool to see them do it in a different way. 
and um, you get some of that energy just from their excitement. And so it's cool to be around. And I think there's, um, I'm looking forward to seeing um, what they're going to be doing in, in, in Pittsburgh coming up. Well, we appreciate it. And thank you so much. We could talk to you all day. Um, but thank you for the incredible work. And we really enjoyed having you as a guest. So thank you very much. Thank you, Courtney. I appreciate it. Um, take care. Talk soon. Absolutely.